Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a conditional access app control policy within Microsoft Cloud App Security. So this is one of the most powerful features that comes part of the Cloud App Security service as far as brokering your sessions and being able to control user activity based off of user risk, session risk, outside factors like if they're enrolled into Intune for device compliance purposes, things like that. So the first thing that you'll want to do is ensure that you have whatever application that you want to set up here uh, established as a single sign-on application within Azure Active Directory. So if you're in the Azure Active Directory portal here, you can come into the section for enterprise applications. And what I've done here is I've created Dropbox as the SSO application that we'll be viewing today for this feature. So this is kind of a prerequisite. I'll show a subsequent video of how to set this up for Dropbox for single sign-on if you guys want to see that. But typically, you know, each service you have has pretty detailed instructions if it's a popular SaaS app on how to set it up for single sign-on. This also, the service works with other IDP providers. So if you're using somebody like Okta, I'll show you how to navigate that as well. So the first thing you'll want to do is actually create a conditional access policy. And from here, you can go down under security, click, click on conditional access. Now I've already set ones up here for obvious purposes to show you what this looks like, but you can define scope of who this is applied to. You can define what applications that you want this to apply to. In this case, I picked Dropbox. And you can, for the, the grant controls, you can just click on grant access. And then under the session controls, this is where you use the conditional app access app control and use the custom policy right here. So you can granularly define what this looks like on the MCAS side of things. After you've done this and turn the policy on, you can come in here to the MCAS side of things. And what you'll want to do is go under the connected app section click on conditional access app control apps. And you'll see that I have this one and I have it connected. This was one of the learning moments for me. I was wondering why after I added it to single sign on that it just didn't populate here automatically. What I found was I had to go into my apps and I had to just sign in for, for the first time after creating the conditional access policy for it to actually populate in that section. And then I'll, I'll start to see you know, the workflows here, which we'll get into here in a second. So take note of that. The other ways you can do this, again, if you're using another IDP, you kind of walk through this wizard to find Dropbox, and then you'll go through the actual, and it's, it's blocked out for me, but if I pick another one here, you'll go through this wizard to upload the metadata file for single sign-on configuration for the app, and then your identity provider as well too like Okta in that case. Since I'm using Azure though, all I had to do was create the conditional access policy, have it as a single sign-on application, and then sign up for it, or sign in for it to actually come up here. From there, we can go under control, we can click on policies, and we'll click on create policy, and we'll do session policy. If you don't have an app in that section, it'll give you a red alert here and says you don't have any apps set up to be able to use this type of policy. So you'll know that that's a problem. Um, they have some policy templates here based off of common things that you might want to do, like blocking, cut, copy, and paste for users who are maybe not on network or they're not using a managed device or the device is in an uncompliant state, things like that. Um, but you can choose what you want to do here. And in this case, you can choose to block activities as well. Or control file download with inspection is another common one that you might want to use. And so it's automatically populating this query for you, but you can add or modify this how you see fit. But it's pretty good out of the box. So you say the device is not equal to Intune compliant in this case. And then the app equals, and then I can select Dropbox because I added that one already. And you can search for particular files if you wanted to, if you want to look for classification labels, if you're using Azure Information Protection, file extensions, file names, file sizes, doesn't really matter. The one I would like to do here is uh, looking at the data classification service and then saying, um, let's look at sensitive information 
And then I have this pretty structured list that I can go through and I can check off things and I can search for things that I might want to detect in the actual files themselves to prevent users from downloading this if they're not on a healthy managed device. This is really great for remote workforce right now when you want to protect this information from going on to a device that doesn't have your security stack being applied to it and don't you don't have uh, that that testing going on so you'll see these here you can modify things about them um, and you can add these additional filters as well trees is encrypted as a match tree files that cannot be scanned as a match and then um, unmask the last four characters of a match this is also apparent as well too so you can go through and you can take action just testing it just to see what this looks like you can apply classification labels here if you really wanted to. You can then have them download them still, but they will also then have the additional protections from AIP on there. And this is again getting super granular on all the things that you might want to be able to do, but you may just want to block them uh, from, from doing that activity and give them a custom message, which is probably the most straightforward way you could do it. So. Definitely lots of options, and again, you can get alerts, you can get emails, you can send it to a playbook, Power Automate. After you're done, you can click on Create there. I've already created one here, and I just want to go into it just to start show you what it looks like. It's for Dropbox. It was all of those settings that I defined there. And so after I've created this and set this up, I'm looking for the same things, and I'm looking for all this information for PII, and I'm blocking with a custom message and all of this. After this is done, you see what you're seeing here. It's it's brokering your session and it's saying, hey, it's being monitored here. And you'll notice the URL start to change. You continue into Dropbox and it's got this designation here that you'll notice um, that's the proxy. So this is the proxy in which it's using. And then now that that policy is in effect, I could try here in Dropbox to download this report. This is on an unmanaged device from Intune, it's definitely not compliant because of that, obviously. So if I try to download here, it's going to try to scan that document for that sensitive information. And then it is presenting me with the download block, the messaging that I customize here, which can be whatever you want. And then the tombstone file is uh, presented as well instead of the actual Excel sheet in this case. So all of that here is um, pretty good information and very easy to set up but it does allow you to control these sessions across third-party applications for where users might potentially store this information as well. So that's everything I wanted to show in this video, guys. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, please like or subscribe to the channel if you guys want to see more content around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.